Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here. And it's my great joy to welcome you to this service of worship here at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Today, we are celebrating the holy day of Pentecost, sometimes called the birthday of the church. This is the time almost 2,000 years ago when the Holy Spirit fell and energized all of the new Christians to go out and fulfill God's purposes and message to the world. We're so grateful that you are here and worshiping with us today, and we'd love the chance to get to know you and to connect with you. So if you would take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will be on your screen in a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here and let us know how we can be praying for you this week. Now I invite you to take a big, deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning, Church. I'm Eunseo Kang, one of the associate pastors here. It is my great privilege to get to lead us in opening prayer. Let us pray. God of wind and flame, ignite a fire in our hearts and fill us with your courage and power. On this day of Pentecost, may our young people see visions and our elders dream dreams. Blow open the doors of our shut up heart and send us into the world to spread the good news of your saving love. In your holy name we pray, amen. <laughs> before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you call us today just as you called the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. A wind and tongues of fire were the symbols of a new thing happening in their lives. May your Holy Spirit burst into our lives today. It is easier for us to hide in the upper rooms of our lives, to let the world go by and not acknowledge your presence. Lord, move us by your Holy Spirit. Forgive our hesitant witness and our complacent spirit. Heal our fears and our wounds. Don't let us just sit back and rest as though nothing important was happening. 
Challenge us to come alive again with your love and words of healing mercy. Wake us up. Shake us up. Breathe your life into us. Let us proclaim your goodness. Let us celebrate the birth of your church. Let us live as you call to be. And let us remember that you have given to us what we need to be your disciples. And let us just say yes to you. Lord, in this world, at this very moment, there are places that are in desperate need of the power of your spirit. We pray for the world, this country, and our community, especially for the Middle East area. We pray for family and friends, for those who need you. And now we pray for those whom we name with our voices or hold in our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Open your hand and fill us with your grace and peace. Save us from our weakness and intercede on our behalf that we may proclaim the glory of your world and help others claim your many blessings. We humbly offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now take a moment to offer our heart and gift. As we respond to God's grace and generosity, I'd like to remind you that you can contribute to the ministry of Riceville United Methodist Church through our website and by mail. Let us continue to worship God. Riceville kids, I'm Pastor Julia, and this is Pastor and Sue, and this is Pastor Doug. Today is a really special day at church. It's called Pentecost. Pentecost is the day when we celebrate something that happened more than 2,000 years ago when Jesus' friends were all sitting together in a room and they were feeling really sad and confused because their leader, Jesus, wasn't with them anymore. And then something called the Holy Spirit, God's presence with them, fell on them. And it looked to them like fire, but fire that didn't hurt them or make them too hot. And from this moment, what we call the church started. The church is all of the people who want to follow Jesus. And for 2,000 years, we've been trying to do that. Well, I wanted to tell you today about something that the church does. And that is that we figured out that we need to take care of each other. So let me think about, think about it this way. Let's say it was snack time and I have three sets of these yummy cheese and peanut butter crackers. And Pastor and Sue has three too. Well, Pastor Doug, did you remember your snack? I, I, I didn't know we were having snack time today. <sighs> Pastor Doug doesn't have any. Well, I mean, we each have three, but I think if he wanted a snack, he should have brought one. You know, if if he thought it would be good to have a snack, he should have taken care of himself, you know? Maybe he just needs to work a little bit harder and find a way to get peanut butter crackers for himself. Well, we might wanna think that way, but that's not what the early Christians did. 
And it's not what we do either as people who are following Jesus. You know, if we each have three, how about we each give one to Doug, Pastor Doug? Here's oh, one. Thank you. Well, now all of us still have two, and that's more than enough for a really yummy snack. Did you know that there's people here in our town, here in Wilmington, other kids and adults who don't have enough food to eat in a day? Just like this. And not just for one snack, like they forgot a snack at school, but people who go home after school and they don't have dinner. And when they wake up, they aren't sure if they're gonna have breakfast. Well. A lot of us are really lucky and we have way more food and more resources that we need. So one of the things that we do as Christians is we can remember to take care of the people who don't have as much as we do. On Pentecost today, we're doing that by bringing in donations for something called Mother Hubbard's Cupboard. It's like kind of a big grocery store, except everything that's there is free. It's for anybody who needs it. So maybe if you go grocery shopping with your parents sometimes, I want you to remember that as you're going and you're getting what your family needs for the week, there's also people who are really hungry. And so maybe you could remember to say, hey mom or hey dad, why don't we get an extra can of green beans or an extra box of macaroni and cheese and we can bring it to church and then they'll give it to the people at Mother Hubbard's cupboard and somebody else will have enough to eat. As Christians, we always take care of each other. And if we have more than we need, we get to give away some of it so that everyone has what they need. I'm really glad to be a part of the church and to get to help take care of people. Let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for making me part of the church. Help me to be a helper. I love you too. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Doug Lane. I'm senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, and it's such an honor to be able to be with you today. Thank you for taking the time to worship with us. Uh, this is an exciting day in the life of the church. It's Pentecost. Pentecost is known as the birthday of the church, so happy birthday to uh, the body of Christ, to the church universal, um, to the church around the world. Um, it's this is a cool, cool story. There's so many great stories in the Bible, right? But this one is really cool. So heads up and pay attention as we um, listen to uh, Luke tell us the story of Pentecost from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, Lord, we ask that your spirit would rest upon us in ways that would utilize us to build up your kingdom. Lord, may we be receivers of that spirit and share that spirit with the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome to Pentecost, everybody. Well, what makes this so different? What makes it so special? What is Pentecost, anyway? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Pentecost is actually a double holiday in the Bible. It was first celebrated for many years by the Jews in Jerusalem before it ever became a special day on the Christian calendar. For the Jews, it took place 50 days after Passover and marked the giving of the first fruits of the spring harvest. When an Israelite saw the very first emergence of the seven species of the land, wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, or dates, he or she was to tie a string around it, designating it as their first fruit. As the appointed time came, after this produce grew to maturity, these first fruits of the land would be presented to God at the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. With great pomp and ceremony, the people would travel to Jerusalem with their first fruits in baskets carried on their shoulders. The journey would be accompanied by music and song. It was a lot of fun. When the pilgrims arrived at the foothills of Jerusalem, they would stop and they would adorn their fruit baskets and make them look really pretty. And as they entered the city, the craftsmen and officers and governors would greet them by saying, Our people, come in peace. A musician playing the flute would lead the procession and accompany the pilgrims to the temple. So when the scripture from Acts says that Jews from every nation were in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, this is what we're talking about. It was a massive celebration with hundreds of thousands of people all in town at the very same time to give their offerings to God. Sounds pretty cool. But wait, there's more. The year that Jesus died, was resurrected, and ascended into heaven, the disciples were all hanging out together in Jerusalem during this annual Pentecost festival. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit came upon them with the sound of a violent wind and appearing as tongues of fire, which rested on each of them. The Spirit gave them power. Power to speak in languages they'd never been able to speak before. Now that's really cool. And that's the Christian part of the Pentecost holiday. How awesome would it have been to experience the Holy Spirit at that first Pentecost? I'd love to have seen that. But that was then, and this is now. Now it's a lot quieter. Actually, I take that back. Actually, it's a lot noisier. It's quieter, it seems, on the divine side. It's much noisier here on the human side. When was the last time that you were amazed and astonished by something that God was doing in your life? When was the last time that you were blown away by the presence of the Holy Spirit? It seems like that sort of experience is left for other people to have. It seems to be for the heroes of the Bible or for those who profess a Pentecostal faith that's wrapped up in signs and wonders and tongues and miracles. What about the rest of us? Is this what we're supposed to hear on Pentecost Sunday? Are we supposed to speak in tongues and get slain in the Spirit? Is today's story a call to live that way? Maybe. Or maybe there's something else. Our story takes place in two parts. The first four verses tell of the coming of the Spirit to the little band of followers who had lost their way when they lost their leader. Only four verses function as the fulcrum around which the whole story of the church pivots. 
Before that, these 12 did almost everything wrong. They missed the point. They ran and hid. They got in the way and scored really poorly on the discipleship aptitude test. Before this moment in the story, you just know that if Jesus is serious about leaving this whole church thing in their hands, disaster is about to happen. But something else happened. The something described in the first four verses of chapter 2 of the Acts of the Apostles. Something noisy, like a violent wind. A tornado that sounded like a freight train roaring through the room. Something that gave them a simple choice. Either get out of the way or get on board. Then tongues, Luke says. Tongues as a fire divided, meaning coming from a common source, but able to spread out like a vine in its branches or like streaks of lightning reaches out to each and every one of them. And these tongues, these fire like tongues rest on each of them. Rested. Rested. Does that seem odd to you? Rested on each of them. Not dove right down to the core not cut through to where the soul and spirit meet, not cleansing them like a purifying fire. The sound was violent, but the tongues rested. And what was the result of the resting flame? What did it do to them or for them? Luke says they could speak new languages. When the spirit comes... We can speak in languages that we didn't even know we knew. Instead of languages of hurt and anger and revenge, we become fluent in forgiveness and reconciliation. Instead of limitation and doubt and anxiety, we speak of optimism and hope and joy. Instead of fear, we speak of faith. Instead of accusation and blame, love rolls off our tongues as if we were born to say it, with a perfect accent, as if we were part of us. Now the second part of the story is where it spills out into the street. That's when you know it's a good party, right? When you can't contain it in the house and you got to take it outside. At the Pentecostal party, the neighbors complained because they didn't understand this new language. There were people who were suspicious and said, you must be drunk. They hissed. If you think this all can be fixed and forgiven, well, you're out of your mind. Maybe we are. We'll have to admit. Out of the minds that kept us speaking this language before. Out of the minds that wanted only revenge, that only wanted to lick our wounds and pout and point fingers at others. Out of the minds that only wanted power and control. We're out of our minds because the Spirit drove us out. Drove us out into the wilderness of living in a world that sometimes hurts, sometimes rejects us. But then the Spirit gives us words to say. A language to live out. And so we do it. In fits and starts. But we do it. At the Pentecost party, the neighbors complained. Some were cynical and sarcastic, but others were curious. Some passing by wanted to join in. They were peering in the windows saying, I'll have what he's having. They were amazed. They were captured. They saw something beyond the surface. Some of them did anyway. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power, they said. But only some. You know, maybe things weren't closer to God in those days. Maybe it just seemed that way. Maybe if we decided to start looking deeper into everything that happens, we'd realize that the Spirit is still closer than we realize. We think we're alone because we don't hear the freight train. But the Spirit just might be resting on us, close as a breath, close as a heartbeat. The story in Acts chapter 2 is a reminder that the church is still important. The church is instrumental to the purpose of God and Jesus Christ. Namely, as Paul reminds us, the reconciliation of the world. What's amazing is that we've been given this spirit, not as a gift to keep to ourselves, but to use to transform the world into the kingdom of God. What is astonishing is that no matter how inept we feel at this task, 
The Spirit keeps resting on us as if we are supposed to be the means of providing comfort, as if we are the people of divine hospitality, as if we are supposed to share good news without even knowing it. You know, I've been your senior pastor here for nine years now. And when I came here, I knew that Wrightsville was a very strong church, a church that was the envy of many. And well, then COVID hit. And every church, including ours, had its share of struggles. But right now, I think we're in a new season. Our administrative council likes to say we're in bloom. I like that. Something's definitely happening here. I believe it's the Holy Spirit resting on us, moving in ways I've never seen before. For instance, last week, 37 young people professed their faith in Christ through confirmation and joined our church. 37. Meanwhile, 61 adults have joined the church since the first of the year. Combine that with the confirmands, and that's 98 new members this year. So far. After all, it's only May. In fact, we've brought in over 250 new members since the start of 2023. Y'all, that's a good-sized church that has joined in less than 18 months. Keep in mind, the average church in America has less than 75 people in attendance each week. Meanwhile, since COVID, we averaged 276 people in worship in 2021. We averaged 391 in 2022, 501 in 2023, and so far this year, 604. Spirit is definitely up to something here. Also, since we added Facebook Live as a platform for online worship, attendance has gone from 221 views per week in 2022 to 558 last year. Last year, we had an extraordinary number of baptisms at Wrightsville, 24. I say extraordinary because the average number of baptisms last year per church in our conference was two. But this year, we've already had 25. And again, it's only May. This past year, we restarted our preschool and 44 kids enrolled. That's just one of the ways our church reached out to the community. Another way was through Teach Reach. This is where we adopted teachers at high poverty schools in Wilmington, 29 of them at Snipes Academy and 17 at Freeman Elementary. It was a huge success. I'm told that the number of teachers requesting transfers from these schools is way down compared to most years. Now, should we take all the credit? Of course not, but it surely didn't hurt. Meanwhile, at Sunset Park Elementary, we restocked a trailer that had burned and set up a decompression room for anxious children. We restarted life groups for our middle and high school youth here at church last fall, and they are flourishing. This coming fall, our youth program will move to Wrightsville on Oleander, thanks to the spirit moving among the members of Oleander United Methodist Church and our youth will finally have a place to call their own. Our adult Sunday school classes and small group Bible studies are going deeper by opening themselves up to material from new teachers, new authors, new curricula. Sunday school attendance was up 40% in 2023 over the previous year. We're leading mission trips to needy areas of North Carolina, El Salvador, and Sierra Leone, and stocking the shelves of Mother Hubbard's cupboard in Nourish NC right here in Wilmington. Pastor and Sue reminded me that one of the ways the Spirit is moving in a Pentecostal way here at Wrightsville is by being willing to receive a new pastor who isn't from America and isn't a native-born English speaker. She's not wrong. It's hard to imagine turning away someone as gracious as in Sue, but we all know that there are churches who sadly wouldn't accept her because she's female, she's Korean, and she has a small accent. Pentecost, you see, it still has something to say to us. It's a word of comfort and a word of inspiration, a call to action and a reminder of a presence. Spirit is moving all around us. I love watching it work. But watching it isn't the point. Being open to having it work in our own lives is what's important. So what might the Holy Spirit be calling you to do? Think about it. 
Pray about it. Say yes to it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, you have poured out your Spirit on your church to transform this world into your kingdom. Lord, may that Spirit rest on each of us this day, no matter where we are. And Lord, use us. Use our gifts in a brand new way. Maybe it's as close as next door or even in our own home. But I know that somebody needs a good word. And I pray that we will be the deliverers of that word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is Pentecost. And Pentecost is still happening. The Spirit is still moving. May your heart be open to it. And may the Spirit rest on you this day, giving you new power, a new language, a new way of acting and moving in this world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.